Okay, so let's move on to building out the coping now. And this is basically, the coping is the metal uh, tube that they put on the top of these ramps. So that way, you know, the skateboarders or inline skaters uh, can grind on that particular uh, pipe, if you will. All right, but they call it the coping. So let's go back into Houdini and get this built out. Alrighty, so let's go and get the coping. So it's this metal pipe that usually sits right on top of the any of the ramps, really. A lot, most of the ramps will have these particular uh, features added onto the ramps. All right, so uh, to build this, I can actually do a really cool technique that allows me to leverage all the work that I've already done. All right, so what I want to do is I want to put the pipe on the top here. So I want to get this, I want to get all the values. I want to reuse all the work that we've done with this sweep node here, all right? All these settings and everything that I've already gotten setting up. And so what I want to do is I'm going to actually right click it and go to actions and I'm going to create a reference copy. All right. So this creates a reference copy for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut that off and I'm just going to copy uh, this particular. Actually, we need to get this particular shape. So uh, let's do this. Well, actually, we need this particular shape right here. So let's actually copy that object merge again. All right. But instead, we're going to get the ramp curve. So I'm going to say get ramp curve here. So ramp curve, and then I'm going to take this null node and just drag it into there. Uh, and again, that's just because I want to keep all my systems clean. So, you know, this is creating the transition. This is creating the ramp. So all these nodes are going to create the coping. So I'm just keeping everything nice and isolated out. Helps you stay organized. At least helps me stay organized. All right. So now I have that uh, ramp curve. Let's pump it into my reference copy, that sweep node that we just made. And let's take a look. So we're going to get that same geometry. And I want to keep all the settings exactly the same. All I want to do is I want to change uh, the output type, the surface type. Currently, it's set to quadrilaterals, which will give me a uh, nice clean geometry, which is great. In this case, I just want to output curves. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down uh, control and shift on the keyboard and then click on the surface type uh, label here. And that basically disconnects the link, the reference link. OK. And so in this case, I actually want to get all the rows. This will give me all the curves, the horizontal curves here. And I also well, we don't actually need to get rid of these points. What I do want to do is I want to grab just this top curve. All right. So to do that, we can actually utilize our group by range node again. All right. So let's do that. Let's do a group by range like so. And let's hook this guy in from the sweep node. And we do definitely want to work on primitives because if I turn on my prim num components, we have a primitive per line, which is perfect. And I just want to grab this guy. So again, we can utilize this end, uh, slider here and just push it up to one and that basically will deselect this top one and select all these inner prims so let's call this group inner prims like so all right and then let's drop down a blast node to get rid of all those guys so i'm just going to hit a blast node and we're going to go and hit or we're going to go and select the inner prims there and look at that we're left with just that curve how cool is that all right so then let's go and drop down a sweep node again okay so let's do this like so I'm going to make sure I hit uh, control S on the keyboard just to save my scene. And we need to go and set the uh, surface shape because, you know, we're not going to be using uh, our own custom cross section. We're actually going to use the round tube because, you know, that's all we really need, actually. And for this, I'm going to pull this all the way down to something like, you know, 0.25, I think. And this is actually a good value for our HDA as well. So let's right click on the HDA name up here in the breadcrumbs and let's go to type properties. And I'm going to make another separator. All right. I'm just kind of keeping all these things in, you know, nice little modules here. I'll probably clean this up a little bit later, but using the separators works while you're, you know, kind of in development. All right. And then I'm just going to drag and drop this radius and this columns. All right. So let's actually name this. This is going to be the uh, coping uh, columns. And this is going to be the uh, coping radius. Just so, you know, we, it's clear which, which parameter goes to what. So. With that, I'm going to hit apply. You'll notice that the uh, parameters over here are now green, which means they are linked up. All right. So with that, let's hit accept to commit all those changes. Uh, I also want to produce the end cap. So the new sweep node allows us to actually produce the end cap geometry, which is awesome. Saves a lot of time. So I'm going to set the end cap to single polygon and I'm going to also include it as a group because I want to be able to UV those guys. Okay, cool. So that also means we need to generate some UVs uh, for this particular uh, tube piece here. And to do that, we're going to go to our UVs and attributes, and we're going to basically uh, compute our UVs. Now, remember that this node over here is actually computing UVs. 
So we should actually break this link as well because our reference copy was creating UVs. So let's break the link and just turn that off. That way we're not generating any UVs. So now we can go and generate UVs for this guy. All right. So I'm going to turn on compute UVs, turn off the normalized computed use, and then turn off my snapping. And if I hit uh, five on the keyboard, you can see I have the perfect UV mapping for this guy. Awesome. So what we need, need to do is we actually need to take care of the, the end caps. You'll notice that the end caps didn't get UV'd. So uh, that would be cool if they actually included that with the, um, the sweep node. But uh, in this case, it's super easy. All I need to do is just put down a UV unwrap node like so. And we'll pipe that guy in there. And we just want to uh, select that end caps group. And that basically will UV map just those guys. So now we've got those. And again, we're going to take care of the uh, texel density here. Uh, once we get the model all done, but at least we're producing UVs and then we'll basically use a UV layout node. All right, so let's go and create a group node. So we're going to create a group node here so we can group this geometry. And this is going to be called uh, coping. And then let's go and give it some color. So I'm actually going to leverage the color that we already did over here. All right, it's already that metal color. So I'm just going to use Alt, left click and drag, and then I'm going to wiggle it off. All right, that'll break the connection. Uh, you can also use Y on the keyboard to bring up the little scissors tool, and then you just left click and drag to create a link there, or to cut the link, I should say. All right, there we go. And now we've got the color. Cool, I'm going to turn off my PrimNum display. And let's go and copy this null node. So Alt, left click and drag. There we go. Let's hook it back up. We'll call this Out uh, Coping. And look at that. We now got that all set up. So at this point, you know, I can't actually, I mean, I think actually if we do this, will that stick? Yeah, and then just turn this guy on so now we can see all, but this one's gonna be templated, right? And so what I wanna do is I actually want to be able to see how all my geometry is coming together. So this, this is when we start to uh, develop a um, final object merge node. And I usually like to call it assembly. So I'm just gonna drop down an object merge node and call it assembly. And then inside of this uh, assembly node or this object merge node, I wanna have all three of these null nodes in, imported into it. All right, so I'm going to select the object merge node, go to transform, set it to none, and then I'm going to uh, left click and drag our transition into this slot right here. Then I'm going to create a new slot by hitting this little plus button, and I'm going to left click and drag the ramp geometry, and then create another slot, and then left click and drag my coping. And now if I turn this guy on, you can see I have all the geometry. So now we don't need to do all that special templating or anything. We can see how all of our model is coming together. Uh, another thing we can do too is start to clean this up. So I'm going to uh, select all these nodes by left clicking and dragging and then hitting shift O on the keyboard to create a net box. And I'm going to call this shape like so. And then let's go and make a net box around this guy. So we'll hit shift O and this allows me now to move all these nodes together, which is really cool. So I'm going to call this uh, transition like so. All right. And then let's uh, select all these guys. All right. Hit shift O. Just move this out a little bit more too. All right, we'll call this ramp. And then finally, we'll do the same thing for the coping. So I'm gonna hit shift O and we'll call this coping. Awesome. Uh, you can also go, I should note too, you can also go and color these. So if you hit C on the keyboard, you can give them color if you want. It, not necessary, but totally can, all right. Cool. So now I've got our ramp. I mean, actually, we've got a ramp all ready to go. It's all UV'd and everything. So, you know, if we were to hit U5 on the keyboard, you can see we have all of our UVs produced. Uh, but what I want to do is actually go and create the deck and the railing uh, at the top here that you usually see, just to give it a nice little extra little bit of detail. All right. So let's move on and take care of that.